Um, so we're going to start by doing what we call the placement. So it's a really good skill of mindfulness. As soon as you start to internalize your thoughts and think about you, you're being mindful, which is such a good buzzword at the moment, but it doesn't really take much to be mindful. So I'm going to take my mind's eye down to my feet, first of all. And we're thinking about a really nice posture, a beautiful alignment, like a tower of blocks standing perfectly, exactly as we're made to stand. So we tend to spend a lot of our time sitting in one hip, or the other, or overarching, or slouching, all of those things that you feel like you're going to do. So I'm going to try and find that lovely placement. So really spread my toes out, I'm going to give them a wiggle, wake them up, and look at my feet as well, and make the connection between the wiggling feeling and the wiggling happening. And then there's a beautiful line. I like to think of a lift. It starts in my ankles. It draws all the work through my legs. It passes through my knees. It passes through my legs, through my hips, through the ribcage, up to the shoulders, right up to the ears, all the way to the top of your head. And if you just have that mindful feeling of the lift drawing up through the body, relaxing your glutes, don't worry about what your tummy's doing, you soften your tummy, and just feel nice and lengthened as if you're being suspended. And that is the perfect feeling of wherever your posture should be. So it's not overextending your rib cage, it's, it's nothing like that. It's just standing long and lengthened. And whilst we're standing there, we're going to take our mind to our core. So your core is like a beautiful big belt that goes all the way around your body. And so it's not just this nice six pack at the front, or well, the six pack we all like to have, apparently. Um, it's all the muscles that hold us up at the core of an apple. So I want you to imagine we're pulling that belt in really, really tight. You can squeeze they get so, so much you can barely breathe. And then let it go to about 50%. And then let it go a little bit more, another 25-30%. And notice how that feels. And then let it all relax. Have a little shake. Relax your tummy. Relax your bum. Relax your shoulders if you feel like it's tensing up in there. Then just regain that feeling of the lift. Hold, sending through your body, long body, chin on the shelf. Pull in that belt, belt buckle. So belt as much as you can. All the way in. Chin on the shelf. Suck it in, 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 in. in. As much as you can and then let it go to about 50% and then a little bit more another 20% and that feeling there 20 or 30 percent just that feeling of something is your core engaged so whenever someone or I say to you just think about that core it's that little feeling of oh, like you're gonna sneeze or you've just been surprised that slight feeling of engagement is just enough so thinking about that feeling now we're now going to take our focus into your pelvic floor so your pelvic floor is that feeling like you need a wee yes jack it's when you need a wee okay so i want you to pretend you really need a wee and you're sucking that wee in really really you can't have a wee because you haven't got a toilet nearby and imagine that pelvic floor feeling goes all the way up again like a lift all the way up to the penthouse seat and then let it go to about 50 percent and then about another 30% let it go and then let it relax and try not to relax that feeling of your belt being just that little notch tighter and we'll do that again so drawing that pelvic floor in suck it all the way up that feeling that you might need a wave you've got to hold it in and then let it go to 50% and then about another 30% gone and that feeling there of that little tightening of your belt and that little squeeze like you need a wee is just perfect. Now it's really hard to keep that all the time, so I will remind you, but if you can keep that thought in your mind, that's going to be great. Whilst we're here, we're just going to take some look, just mobility of the neck. So very gently, you're going to slow motion, say no with your head. So we're not overdoing it. And again, I want you to really take in everything that's in your space. Keep thinking about that belt thing, that little notch tighter. And really look around your room. If you were lucky enough to be in a room with a view, or if you were lucky enough to be in your favourite place, you'd be looking out to the horizon. And make that little no, your last one. And then we're going to take it to a yes. So you're tilting very gently back. Don't let your head drop back dramatically. And then we take it down and don't let your chin quite get to your chest. Just a gentle lengthening of the neck. Just getting some mobility in there. And really use your eyes to guide you so you don't feel too dizzy. One more of those. And then bring it back to centre. Okay, we can take some shoulder rolls. So shoulders, take two, a roll of both shoulders. Then your elbows do a circle, really opening out the chest. Then your arms go all the way around. We 
take a little lower and then we're going to lift up onto our toes. So we're trying not to wobble. Draw your shoulder blades down. Think about that feeling of the belt pulling in, that pelvic floor reaching up. And then arms extend and lower. And again, shoulder roll. Then the elbows. A little bounce in the knees if you like today. Then the arms. And then we're bending to lift up. Lengthening, imagine you're being lifted by your fingers, shoulder blades coming down. Try to make sure that you don't end up where your shoulders are doing. Try not to roll in the ankles, you've got to hold them really tight, skip it this way. And lower. And you need one more of those, a little bit more of a bounce this time, get that shoulder moving. Shoulders, elbows, arms, stretching up, lift, press the floor away through your toes, lengthening the spine, nice long neck. And then release again, front. So now we're going to start already to introduce the strap or your dressing gown or belt scarf, whatever you've got. So grab that. I'm going to take a little step forward because I have a feeling I might take out some of my ornaments. So I'm just going to come forward and then you need to see what my top half is doing really. So I hold my arms a little more than shoulder distance apart. And all I'm going to do is I'm taking them all the way around without bending my elbows. I'm taking it all the way down until it hits my bum or the base of my spine and then that's all me off and then bringing it back around. So I want you to do this in your own time and if we start to think about our breathing, we're breathing in on the up and out on the down. So take your time. It's going to feel awkward if about that point when you feel like you want to bend your arms. Obviously if you have your arms a little bit further apart, you're going to find that a little bit less intense. Nearer together, it's going to be more intense. There's a really good one if you struggle with any stress or strain in the top half of your back or your neck, which I think a lot of us do. That's lovely. So just getting some nice mobility, nice and easy. Keep thinking about that belt being pulled in that extra notch. Think about that pelvic floor. Keep your chin on the shelf. We're going to do one more of those. And back up. Now on the next one, we're going to stop halfway so your band ends up above your head. And this time you're going to bend your elbows to draw your band in behind your shoulder blades. Straight up and straight down. That's good. And up. So I'm drawing my elbows in towards my waist. Very nice. This is a really good one. This was a new one to me today, actually. When I was having a bit of a research of what would be fun to do with a bond that was different to last time. It's a really good one for the arms. We'll do one more of those as well as opening up the shoulders and getting some movement in there. Good. Okay. Just bring the arms back forward. Give them a little shake and a roll if you need to. We're going to do one more with the band standing up nice and tall before we start doing some other bits and bobs with the legs. So now we're just going to do a little bit of a side stretch. Now we're going to do some side stretches when we're sat on the floor as well, so I'm not going to double up on that. But just to get some extra mobility in the lower part of the spine, I'm going to call this the banana. So I breathe in and I bend all the way over and I let my hips go. So I'm making lovely banana shape and as I breathe out, I pull myself up to centre. So I breathe in and I make a banana. Really let that hip go long. Be careful the shoulders don't come into your ears and breathe out to come up. Lovely. So keep going like that in your own time. So breathing in. Tilting right the way up. Now when you come up, I want you to imagine it's your rib cage that pulls you up. Different feeling. Breathing in to go down. Rib cage pulls you up. Shoulders are down. One more on each time. Breathing in. Nice big stretch. Shoulders are down. And out. Last one. Breathe in. How far can you go? How banana y can you be? And breathe out. Very good. And just relax in front of you. Oh, you can probably feel that in your arms just a little bit. Okay, so we're going to use these again. So don't chuck them away too far. I'm going to just pop mine down there. So we're going to go into one of our uh, squat sequences. So we just, or if you're a dancer person like me, we like to call them plies. 
And if you call them a PA, it doesn't quite sound so menacing. <laughs> so I'm going to take my hands at my hips like so. And I'm just gently lowering and pushing the floor away through my heels. So only go as far as you can comfortably go. I breathe in on the down and out on the up. I like to think about blowing the floor away through the heels of my feet. So just take it exactly as you're comfortable. So you can go super low if you're up for it today. Or you can just take a little tiny bounce just to get your legs engaged if you're, if you're switching your arms today. That's good. Completely in your own time. So you might feel confident we're going a little fast today. You want to get your heart rate up. You might feel nice and relaxed. Think of yourself as a nice gooey piece of chewing gum or mozzarella cheese. Nice and stretchy. Good. Keep thinking about that little belt notch, that pelvic floor, just gently drawing in. Okay, next time we're going to take it down, we're going to take the arms out like so. So I'm going to start and you can join in when you're ready. The arm is going to come down and up. And up. Okay, so I'm lifting one heel. And the arm, opposite arm is sweeping down. And up. It's a killer on the legs. So lift up through the spine. One more on each leg. If you can. If you can't, then just rest. And we're going to go on to the next exercise. Okay? So just do what you can do. So pressing the floor away. Oh, yes, I feel that in my legs. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to move sideways on now so that you can see my squat from the side. So we did these the last couple of weeks and I feel like that's a pretty good way of doing it. So we're imagining, and I know this is the only way I can ever, ever teach these and I've been teaching them forever, is to imagine there's a horrible, horrible toilet there. Maybe it's a festival or something, but you've got to go. So the only thing you can do is to hover. So as I hover, I send my tailbone back, so where your tail would be if you were a cat or a dog, and my fingers are going forward. I'm be careful not to draw my shoulders towards my ears. I'm pulling my shoulder blades down and not dropping my chin on my chest. So I'm looking towards the end of my mat, and I press away and blow out the air to stand up. I breathe in on the down, sending my tailbone back. Tummy is drawn in, and I push away. So eye line is up, don't drop your eyes. Think about that belt buckle. Nice straight back, sending that bum back. We're going to do three more. And out. That's it. You can do more if you like. You can go slower than me and do less. Or faster than me and do more. Whatever you're feeling up to today. Okay, we're going to do one more in this exercise, in this position, before we roll down onto the mat. Um, so you can watch and then join in with me when you're ready. I'm going to demonstrate first. I take myself down, back into that lovely squat shape. So I've got a long back. I'm going down. I'm going to lift my heel. And up. Other heel. And up. And repeat. So join in if you're ready, if you're up for it. Pulling that belly button in towards your spine. Nice and easy. We're going to do four more. So again, make sure you work in your own time. Only follow my timing if it suits you. Do less, do more, whichever you prefer. That's my last one. I'm going to come up. And I'm going to immediately rub my legs because that was really good. <laughs> that's made me want to, that's made me sweat, that one, goodness me, all right. Okay, make sure you stop and have yourself a drink whenever you need one. Just take it easy, have a little twist and turns when you need as well. Okay, so we're going to do the roll down. Lots of you are really um, familiar with this. So for our newer, newer people we welcome, then I'm going to, you can follow me. So I'm taking a lovely mobility of the spine. This was really good if you struggle with back pain, which as you know, I do. So I drop my chin on my chest, first of all, after a nice deep breath in. Chin goes on the chest. And 
and I'm curling over. So I want you to imagine your back is like a bike chain, each vertebrae. Now you're going to get as far as you can before you feel a real stretch up the backs of your legs. When it's, you feel that stretch is enough, then we bend your knees. I want you to imagine then you've got a lovely cup of tea on the bottom of your back. And you've got to keep it super still until you get into a beautiful box shape. So everything's in line, ankles, uh, knees and hips, wrists and shoulders. I take a breath in to press. I push the floor away, blow out. I'm gonna do three of those. Now I'm doing triceps, and that's because I haven't got the space to do bicep ones. Then I reverse the action. So I've got a cup of tea on the bottom of my back. I'm very carefully taking myself back into that full body stretch. I'm dropping my chin on my chest, then slowly uncurling one vertebrae at a time. The shoulders, neck, head comes last. So take a breath in, and I repeat. So down we go. So think about that nice, lovely parallel position that we started at the beginning of the class. Same as here now. Find that stretch. Nice cup of tea on the base of your spine. You've got to keep it still. Don't want to spill a drop. Now, if you want to do, I'll see if I can do a bicep one for you. If you want to do bicep ones, obviously your elbows are going out towards the side instead of back. But whatever you're doing, your nose needs to be in front of your hands. And then I'm gently rewinding it. We're going to do two more sets of these. So if you're familiar with this exercise, feel free to do more than two if you would like to. You can also change that um, press up dip to a full press up if you stretch your legs out and you go out into a plank. So there's lots of things you can do to make it more intense if you feel confident. Equally, you can go slower than me if you prefer. So we're breathing in on the down, pushing the floor away with your breath through the heels of the hands. Think about that notch on your belt. Think about your pelvic floor still being active. And then tailing it back in. Slowly, slowly. Take your time. Nice and easy. Find that stretch. Your long back rolling up one vertebrae at a time. Really cool. Right, this is my last one. But let's make this our last one. So breathing in. And breathing out. Rolling ever so carefully down the floor. I find a nice stretch. Take a moment for myself because I quite like that stretch. And gently taking it out. So remember you can develop this by going out into a plank rather than into a box. I breathe in and push the floor away. My belly button is working hard because it's notched in on that belt. I'm going to do one more here. And out. Now instead of going backwards, I'm going to relax my toes and take myself into child's pose. So I like to separate, separate my knees personally, so I feel like I've got more space. And just collapse yourself into that nice position and take a minute. So we're aiming to get your bottom as close to your heels as you can comfortably feel. I never like to sit still in these positions personally, so don't feel like you have to. I have a little wiggle. Take your fingers for a little walk, but don't overdo it. So you want to feel like a lengthening feeling. And take a nice deep breath and really, really fill your lungs. Breathing in. And really blow it away. And again, breathing in. And blow it away. Excellent, right. If you're happy there for a moment, I'm gonna demonstrate the next thing. So you'll feel free to stay there. You mark it with me. So I'm going to go back out onto my all fours. I'm going to take a little bit of a, oh, a mini cat camel in there just to feel how it feels in my gut. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we're going to do the threading of the arm. Thread, thread the needle. So I'm back in this box shape. I promise you won't do many here today. I say this every week and then we're like, oh, my wrist. But I promise. <laughs> I take a nice deep breath in. And I take my hand as furthest away from you and I'm going to thread it through like a needle. So I'm breathing in and as I breathe out, I thread it through. My front arm bends and I'm trying to get that shoulder towards the floor, if not on the floor. Rest my head on the floor. And when I'm there, I take a nice breath. In. And out. And another one. In. 
line out. And on the third one, as I breathe out, I return. And take a little breath in the centre to repeat the other way. So I take a breath in. And as I breathe out, I thread my arm, my other arm through, bending the hand that's on the arm that's on the floor, getting my face towards the floor, shoulder on the floor, taking two breaths. Feel a nice spiral in the spine. And on the third one, on the exhale, I'm pushing myself back up to centre. And finding that middle ground, really spreading my whole hand out, really feeling the floor, breathing in. And we're going to go again, back the other way. Sending my fingers far away. It will feel very different from one side to the other because we're not perfectly symmetrical and nor should we be. Especially if you find that you favour one side of the body to the other. So taking a few nice deep breaths there, really think about the air going into the rib cage, into the lungs expanding into that area of the spine that's being spiralled and then on the third you take a nice deep breath in and we exhale back to centre one more on the other side breathing in and out stretch that finger far far away really find that nice comfortable place where you're resting into your shoulder and we're taking a few big breaths, twisting naturally in the spine. And on the third one, we take a nasty breath in. And we breathe out. Find that box shape again. Okay, just to relax the hips, you're going to do one circle of the hips one way. And back to centre. And then the other. Nice and slow and relaxing. And just repeat that again. Nice and easy, and then one more back the other way. Very good, okay. We're going to do one more in this position. I'm just going to come forward a little bit. We're going to do the donkey kick. So I'm pulling that, um, my tummy in, so I'm tightening my belt buckle. I've still got that cup of tea. It's now reappeared on the bottom of my back. The cup of tea I'm looking forward to having at five minutes past nine. Okay, so keeping it nice and still. You've got to be very careful that your hands have disappeared slightly in front of you. It's really tricky without a mirror. You lot are balanced on a, my black piano so I can actually see myself in your reflection, which is pretty handy. So be careful that your shoulders don't disappear into your, um, into your ears. Pull your shoulder blades down and be careful that you don't arch in your spine like so. So I'm just finding that spot that's not a camel, and it's not a cat, it's somewhere in between where I feel like I could be a very nice coffee table if I wanted to. I take a breath in, and as I exhale, I swing my left foot backwards, and three little pumps towards the ceiling. Other leg, breathing in, and the other one goes. And in, breathing in, and out. That's good. So we're going to keep going like that. If the breathing is driving you crazy, which it does initially with Pilates, it's taken me a really long time to get to it, and it can almost make you feel a bit lightheaded. Don't worry about the breathing. As long as you are breathing, that's the main thing. Okay? Think about the more important things at the moment are to think about that nice still pelvis where you've got that cup of tea. And pulling in that belt notch a little bit, keeping your shoulders away from your ears. Your fingers really, really spread out. We're going to do one more on each side. And here's my last one. Okay, so staying in this position, rest if you need to, give your wrists a rest if you need to. So I'm just going to take a breath in. I'm going to extend my leg backwards. I'm going to take it out to the side and back in to the centre. Okay, so I'm breathing in with the other leg. Extending out, extending around towards the side as far as I can go without kicking a piece of furniture. You probably feel the same. And back in. Now with this one, you can keep your toe on the floor and draw a nice little semi, like a curve with your big toe. Or you can take it off a little bit 
and moving it elevated. So you've got a couple of choices. You might feel like one side feels better elevated than the other, but the most important thing is to keep that cup of tea really, really still. And you'll probably find that the shift between one leg and the other is the hardest point to keep it still and not take all your weight into your supporting side. We're gonna do just one more on each side. So breathing in, breathing out to extend. Little curve, come back in, and my last one. Think about that cup of tea, don't let it spill. And back in, whoa, sit yourself back. Oh, rest your wrist. Give your wrist a bit of love and attention. Oh, if we're not doing anything else with your wrist, you'd be glad to know. I think it would be very hard push unless you only did one exercise in that block shape and not have a little bit of <laughs> wrist fatigue, let's call it. So have a little stretch, Ooh, and then we're going to take ourselves down onto the side. So if you haven't had a drink already, now's a really good time. Now is also a good time to grab your cushion. This is just for comfort, nothing else. Just for pure, adulterated comfort. So I'm going to have a swig of drink and we're going to start doing some work on your legs. So just a couple of leg exercises today and then I've got some core exercises, just a couple which use the straps. So I thought we'd test my core test for that one. Yay. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. Right, <clears throat> I am down on my side and you've got a couple of choices. So you can either be up on your, um, up on your cushion if she's under, under your elbow for now. Um, or you could, if you felt more comfortable, go all the way down and just be working your legs. So you've got a couple of options. Um, if, you're more, if you're more comfortable relaxing here whilst we do some leg work, then do that. Obviously, if you're up on your elbow, it's gonna be feel a little bit more intense. So that's up to you. I'm gonna go up on my elbow because I can see a little bit up there. Um, so, I'm in that nice long stack shape, so I'm be careful that my elbow isn't behind me, all the usual things. I'm using this cushion's comfort, I'm careful that I'm not slouching into my ribcage. So I'm really pulling my ribcage up and I'm being as long and as strong as I feel I possibly can. So where I've got my messy bun on top of my head, I'm thinking of the energy going out the top of my head as if I'm being pulled in that direction. I'm pulled in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to keep my hands here for strength. So we're going to start by doing some little lifts first of all, but there are little lifts with a twist. I like to think of these like murmurs. So I'm going to do a lift and a lower. So as I lift, I'm not going to lift too high because the other leg's going to join it. And then back down. And again, breathe in. And the other leg's going to join. And back down. So this is a tiny one. So feel free to do this completely flat on the floor. It's probably going to feel a lot easier. But I'll stay here so I can see you. And down. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do it like that because I can't do it properly and you can't see me. So I'm going to go down like this so you can see me properly how it should be done. So, so I take a breath in. I lift my top leg. The other one joins. You hold it for a beat and then you lower it together. Yes, mermaid. I'm sure it's not called a mermaid, but that's what I call it in my notes. And the other one joins and then they lower. Yeah, we're going to do three more. So breathing in, breathing out to lift, breathing in, breathing out to lower. Good. So think about still that notch of the belt being pulled in. Obviously, the higher you feel like you've lifted that first lift of the leg, the higher you're going to feel like you need to go. You can literally be here if that's more comfortable. And you can go from there. So work out where it is. We can do one more. Other one joins. And lower. Yeah, they're good ones. I think I did that one. I did that one the other week when Paddy joined. And he said it nearly killed him. Well, actually, most of it nearly killed him, but there we go. <laughs> You'll notice that he hasn't been back since. I think I killed him off. Right, we're gonna, you're going to bend your underneath leg. We're going to sweep that top leg forward with a nice flex foot and then we're going to push it away with a nice pointy toe all the way back. So I breathe in and I point and out. So I want you to imagine, imagine you're on a beach and you're drawing a lovely big groove in the 
just warm sand. So there you are lying on the side, you want to really isolate the action into the lower half of the body. So try and keep this nice and still. Think about that belt being tucked pulled in. Good. And the further back you can send it, even better, because that's working a really nice part of your glutes and all of that supports your back. And that's it, we're gonna do two more. One out, and last one. Really stretch that toe, long leg, okay. Bring that leg in, give it a little squeeze and a rub. We do one more bit of action with that leg. We're gonna leave the other leg today. We're not gonna do our pelvic floor squeezes today. Controversial, I know. So I'm gonna take that leg on top. I'm gonna to take the other leg out too, so I'm back in my half mermaid shape. Top leg lifts, and I'm gonna draw some little circles. So I'm being careful to not let the top hole of my body go like a wobbly jelly. So I'm squeezing that belt in. I'm squeezing that belt buckle in a little bit extra notch if you can. And the pelvic floor. Little circle the size of a golf ball. If you want to work a little bit more intensely, you flex that foot for me. Oh yeah, that feels different, doesn't it? <laughs> that doesn't feel so nice. And then we're going to send it back the other way. So it's just making it more intense with that flex of the foot, so you don't have to. You can keep your foot nice and stretched and relax. Whatever you feel, as you're probably feeling it now, like, mm, does it feel like my leg's about to be bitten off by a shark? Maybe. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Oh, there we go, give your knees a squeeze. Give them a little cuddle. That was, a, that was good. Right, we're gonna take ourselves up to sitting. So this is where you're gonna want either your cushion and or your block or Tina Turner book like I've got. Take your time when you come sitting up, especially with all that deep breathing, it can make you feel lightheaded at the best of times. Now's a good time to have a swig of drink too. So you might not, you might be really comfortable sitting with cross legs. It's not my favorite position, even being a dancer, really, really not. So I like to sit on <laughs> Tina or any big, thick book will do. And if I just put it underneath my bum, it just means my cross legs feels a little bit more comfortable. If cross legs isn't for you, you can do this kneeling, you can do this with your legs out in front of you, wherever is best. So I just find that that, with that little bit of space underneath me just allows my hips to do what they want to do. I also um, was looking into sitting with cross legs and the, if you cross your legs in the middle of your shin rather than at your ankles, that can also be a bit more comfortable. So you also going to need to have strap once again. Yay. Okay. So this time, I'm taking my strap, and it's going to be at shoulder height, um, uh, shoulder width, sorry. And this, and I'm, it's not loose, I'm not pulling it, it's taut, okay? It's a nice taut, so definitely shoulder, not as wide as we were earlier, which was, uh, which was, which was as far apart as that, so shoulder distance. And I'm just gonna take a nice breath in, and lift it above my head. I feel that feeling of length, draw my shoulders down and towards my spine, and then back out. Breathe in and out to lower. Keeping those arms nice and straight, length in the waist. Again, I'm not pulling apart, but I'm keeping it nice and tall. Breathing in, and lift. Just to above my head, breathe in, and lower. Lengthening the arms. Think, imagine I'm sending that band as far away as I can within the realms of my own arm length. Breathing in. Breathing out to lift. Drawing the shoulder blades down. Breathing in. Breathing out to lower. Nice and easy. We're going to do one more of those. Breathing in. It's a nice one if you close your eyes actually. Breathe out. Lift, long, long, long. Feel that strap helping your shoulders to really open up. And breathing out to lower. Lovely, lovely. So like I said before, we're going to do some little side stretches. So relax your arms for a second if you need to, give your shoulders a roll. I take my hands above my head. And I'm breathing out and just tipping over. And I'm thinking of pulling down 
with this arm that's treading towards the floor. So it's a slight bend, pulling the shoulder away from my ear. You can't see that very well, it's a strap wobbling in front of your face now. So pulling this shoulder away and keeping both bum cheeks firmly on your mat or on your block. And back to centre. And the other way, breathing in, breathing out, tilting over. Shoulders are down. Gentle feeling of extension between your hands, just a gentle pull. Slight bend in this arm when you're ready, just to increase that stretch more. And coming back up to the center, one more on each side, breathing in and out. Bending that arm when you're ready, just to increase that pull. Bring the shoulders back to center. And one more, breathe in. And out. Taking over, bending in that arm, slight extension, feeling the space in the ribcage increase, pulling the shoulders down, back up to center, and lower the arms to relax. Relax. Oh, give your arms a shot. Those shoulders are rolled. Very nice. Right, one more set like this. This is for your neck. So a super good one. If you have, um, especially if you're set in front of a desk all day, I imagine, in front of a computer. So I'm taking the strap and I'm just putting it at the very, very um, top of my spine, the base of my skull. So where my hair is, it's just underneath. So you'll find it and all I'm going to do is take a little stretch down towards the floor. So I'm relaxing it. I'm not caving in. My back is still long and stacked. I'm just gently encouraging some space. And whilst I'm there, I'm ever so gently saying no with my head, but like a little tiny baby no. And you can really feel it. Notice that sensation as it travels right down through your neck to the way your neck and your spine become one. Relax your shoulders. Let that tension go. Draw your shoulders down, don't weigh your shoulders as earrings. Little nose, little nose. Then see if you can take a breath in and slightly increase that pull just by 0.2%. Feel what that feels like, feel that lengthening, feel that top part of your spine saying, gosh, thanks. Tiny little nose, tiny, tiny. Really good, pull those shoulders down. Then let that no just melt away, let it disappear. Just relax your hands a little bit, relax in your arms. Relax the strap, let it just disappear down behind your head. You feel like your head is filled with helium. And then slowly roll yourself up to sitting really slow. Whee! Natural high. Okay, just have a little twist and a shake, whatever you feel like you need to do there. That's quite, it's quite a deep stretch. You can just feel how that feels and take your time. When you can please to know, we can lie down on the other side, or maybe not please to know, because when we go on the other side, we sort of start moving your legs about. So, we are going to keep that strap to one side again. I'm going to get rid of Tina. Off she goes. For her. She's had a weak bit of fun. Although if you join me for my last freestyle on Friday, she will make a return. She will make a return for her last hurrah for my last freestyle class. Right, we're going to repeat everything we did on the other side on this side. So instead we're going straight down into comfy, comfy mode. Middle well one half of the body feeling comfortable. I've got a lovely straight line as I look down my body. So be careful your feet aren't in front of you. You feel it. You'll feel if you're straight or not. And my hands here like so. I take a nice deep breath in. The top leg lifts, floats up just a little bit. I breathe in. The other leg joins. I breathe in. And they lower. Nice and easy. And again, breathe in. And lift. Breathe in. And join. Breathe in. And lower. So we're going to keep going like that. You can absolutely follow my rhythm, or you can work a little bit slower or even a little bit faster, whatever you like today, to just go in your own rhythm. Don't worry too much about how many you did on one side or the other, life's too short for that. You're doing it, that's the main thing. Be careful that your shoulders don't creep inside your ears. So draw those down, maybe change where your hand is. 
so that they're really your back is really being able to work to its best. Think about that notch on the belt just to help you support. The core is a wonderful thing. Your core will do all of this without you telling it to do anything. But if we can just give it a little bit extra engagement, it's just going to help you, particularly if you suffer with lower back pain. It's just helping to train it to know when it really needs to kick in in extra gear. We're going to do two more. And then this is my last one, so breathing in. And lift. Breathing in. And let out. Okay, good. Right. I am going to bend the underneath leg. This is for support more than anything else. You can do this exercise with the underneath leg straight if you're feeling super brave. I just find it easier with my leg bent, and we may as well make life a bit easier when we can. So I'm drawing that leg forwards with a lovely flex foot, and I'm pointing my toe, and I'm drawing that fantastic trench in the sand. So breathing in, and pushing it away, really lengthening that toe, breathing in. Top half of the body staying as still as it can. And as the more length we can get in on the back, you should feel it as you get behind you stretching out in your hip flexor here, which is really good if you suffer with lower back pain because a lot of it tends to come from pelvic floor, uh, whether you have issues with your pelvic floor that you know of or not, generally it comes from pelvic floor if you're not really strong on the inside, and from tightness in the hips. So this is a great one for opening up the hips and just letting that flexibility fly. And nice, and we'll do two more. Last one. Okay, I'm going to extend that underneath leg. You can keep it where it is if you prefer. And I'm just going to draw some little tiny golf ball circles with that foot, being careful that the top half of my body isn't wobbling around like a jelly. So I'm drawing in that belt, one extra notch. Pulling in my pelvic floor, drawing my shoulders away from my ears, relaxing into the cushion, sending the energy out the top of my head through my messy bum and out through my big toe. Again, you can flex your foot if you want to. Get ready to send it back the other way. So a little so if you're flexing your foot, you're thinking about drawing a golf ball with your heel, but really lengthening that leg. So pulling the shoulders down, long neck, nice breaths. And if you don't want to, make sure you point that toe or just keep your foot relaxed. Four, three, two, and one. Very nice. Ooh, give you loads of little squeeze. Okay, so we're going to roll onto our backs now. So keep your cushion there. I like to have a cushion to keep my head on. So take your time. Have a drink on the way if you'd like to. We're just going to take a moment to do a little bit of imprinting. So when you're ready, I've got my feet flat and I'm imagining I'm a lovely channel. And I like to have my cushion behind my head because I feel like it helps to keep everything in line. Otherwise, I feel like I'm like this. You might prefer not to. You might like to have your block. So do whatever you feel comfortable. Well, the aim of the game is to not have your back completely flat against the floor. That's not how we're built. We're built to have a natural curve in the spine. It's just finding that balance between the two that helps your core to work a little bit more efficiently and to help support your lower back. So in order to do that, I want you to imagine, <laughs> last week I'm sure I called it the Bermuda Triangle, so I'm going to stick with that. So the Bermuda Triangle is your hip bones and our two points and the other point is your pubic bone. So if you were to put your, your heels and your hands on your hip bones and take your hands in, draw your thumbs and your forefingers, you will make the Bermuda Triangle. And just as you're there, just rock your Bermuda Triangle forwards and backwards. So we're testing that sensation of having the one point, the, the pubic bone point being lower than your hip bones and vice versa. So know what it feels like to over arch and know what it feels like to over press into the floor. And just keep moving like that. You can move your hands if you prefer until you sort of find where you feel like your happy place is there. So if you were to get that cup of tea, which is ready for you, and place it on your Bermuda Triangle, it will be perfectly still and balanced, okay? Draw your shoulders down, relax your rib cage, and think about your rib, the space between your rib cage and your hip bones just shortening ever so slightly. So it's all becoming 
a little bit more calm in the middle. But there is enough space underneath you to just about, just about post a letter is fine. Okay, so today, I was going to use the strap, but now we're all here, let's just stay as we are. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my fingers, interlink them, and just place them behind my head, like so. This is why we were going to use the strap. I figure if we're all in our lovely, perfect shape, we're not going to move in there. And I'm taking a nice deep, deep breath in. And as I breathe out, I'm just curling out my chin, it dips towards my chest. Just to lift my head and shoulders off the floor, breathing in. And lowering back down. Thinking about that cup of tea, breathing in. Breathing out and gently curling up. Chin goes down first. Breathing in. And out. Lovely. So we're just going to keep going like that. Nice and easy. Nothing too crazy. Just finding that extension. So as you keep going like that, I will demonstrate. To pull my head up. So feel free to join in with the strap if you want. I completely understand if you feel you're in the groove. And you'd rather not. What I do find it does with the strap out of interest is not only is it making my arms work a little bit harder again, is I feel like I can hit a better shape, funny enough. Now, of course, I am using a strap, not an elastic band. Now, you can use either. If you're using an elastic band, you can really pull on that and really get some work in on your arms if that's what you're after. If you're using something like a belt or a dressing gown cord, you've got less mobility in the strap so it's really gravity and you're doing resistance work using your own body which is amazing. I'm going to do one more and lower. Okay so staying in that position if you haven't already grabbed your strap then do now and you're going to take it and I'm going to put it just underneath my feet Whoop. like that. And I want to hold it, shoulder distance apart, but I want to try and, at the moment, it's touching my bum. So I'm going to take a breath in. And I like my strap to be nice and flat, <laughs> otherwise it ruins my head. I take a breath in, and as I breathe out, I'm taking that strap away from my bum. I breathe in, and I breathe out to lower. Okay, that's option one. Option two is to take your legs to tabletop, like so, thinking about that cup of tea, and as I lift up, I'm taking it away from my bum, and I'm going to hold it there and pulse, okay? So you're either going to pulse with your legs at tabletop, or you're going to pulse with your feet still flat on the floor. Or, okay, so let's try it all together. So you've got your two options, feet down or feet up. Ready? I'll breathe in. I breathe out and take my legs to tabletop if that's what I'm doing. Breathe in, breathe out and lift. And I'm gonna take some pulses. So I'm breathing in and out. Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Really there, breathe in and out. One more, breathe in and out. And then breathe in, round out to lower, breathe in and out to lower. So it's a bit of, those of you that have done Pilates a long time or for a while, that's like an extension of the 100. Quite good with the strap because you don't have to think about your hands going up and down quite so much in my opinion. Okay. So um, that's it now, I promise, I promise you really don't need to strap anymore, I promise. Okay, so I'm going to remove the cushion and we're just going to do some hip raises to finish before we have a little stretch and relaxation. So I'm back in that nice flat position. I'm thinking of a pair of tram lines running from my big toe all the way up my shins, through my knees, through my hips, across my rib cage, out the tops of my shoulders, brushing my ears. So I'm in a lovely tram line position, thinking about my Bermuda Triangle. 
Just give your pelvis a little nod and a shake, just to feel like you know where that is, drawing my shoulders down towards the base of my spine. And taking a breath in. And as I exhale, I want you to peel your pelvis off the floor. So I tilt my pelvis first. I continue that peel and I'm going all the way up into a nice shoulder stand. I'm really stretching my hips up, feeling a length in the fronts of my hip flexors, sending the energy out through my kneecaps towards the opposite wall. I take a breath in and I reverse the action. So I'm contracting and sending the space between my shoulder blades down into my mat first. Then working my way all the way down through each vertebrae, each little part of the spine. Don't miss any of them out until I get to my pelvis. Hardcore, breathing in, breathing out, tilting the pelvis. Nice and slow, really increasing the mobility in the spine, sending the energy out through my kneecaps towards the opposite wall, really getting my weight into my shoulders, breathing in, hips high, breathing out, melting back in towards the mat, shoulder blades go first, all the way through the spine. So really imagine each vertebrae, like it's a musical note on a piano and each bit has to be played. And release, breathing in, breathing out, curling out, pelvis first. Lift, 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 lift. Sending your hips super high, really stretching up through the hips into the shoulders, breathing in. Energy out through my kneecaps, breathing out, melting down through the shoulder blades, through each vertebrae of the spine. Play that piano all the way down, right to your tailbone. One more, breathing in and breathing out. Send those hips nice and high now. Really enjoy that mobility, that lovely snake-like movement of the spine. Send your hips really high. This is the last one. Breathing in, breathing out, melting down. Shoulder blades in the middle of the spine, all the way down to the bottom of the rib cage. Find those little bits of vertebrae we can get in the curve. They're the hardest ones to get into the mat. Oh, yeah. And all the way down. Very good. Just give your hips a little wiggle. Send your legs away. Let your hands float above your head. You just have a whole body stretch. So flex your feet and then stretch your feet as if you're in a tub of war. Stretch your whole body. Ah, like that. I do like a hip raise. I didn't put the arms in today. I felt like I wanted a relaxing hip raise. Okay, so we're going to now start to have a little bit of a stretch. So I'm going to bring my draw my feet back up into the to the flat on the mat once again. And this time I'm going to take my whole body over onto my side. So I'm like held up in a fetal-like position. If you want your cushion back now, then do grab it. It's time to be comfy. So my knees are together. And my hands are out in front of me. My palms are together. I take a breath in. And I'm opening out that top hand like I'm drawing a rainbow. As far as I can comfortably go. Let gravity do some of the work. Try and keep those knees nice and together. And then I'm drawing it back in. We'll do a few on this side and a few on the other. So we're just getting that spiral back in the spine. Watch that hand as it goes. Let the shoulder blades drop down towards the floor. So don't worry if you can't reach that hand towards the floor. Don't force anything. It's not a competition in this class. It's just finding where your own mobility is and being really comfortable with that and really pleased and really enjoying that opening out the chest and these different shapes and stretches that we don't treat our bodies to often enough day to day. We're going to do one more on this side. And this opening out and then gently bring your body back together. 
So now I'm going to unfold my whole self. So I'm just going to take myself into lotus position. So the soles of my feet are together. I'm just going to inch my hips so the back underneath me square on the mat. Soles of my feet are together and I'm just letting my hips relax out to the side. Now, you guys know me, the ones that come regularly, they know that this is my favourite position. For about a few minutes, I really like this position and it, then it becomes <laughs> like I think I'm going to be stuck. But just for a few seconds, let your arms relax out to the sides. Arms are facing upwards, knuckles are heavy. Soles of my feet are together, take a nice breath in. Feeling lengthening through the legs, out through the knees. Really feel that point, the base of your pelvis, making contact with the mat, that heavy, important part. Take a breath in. And as we exhale, just roll yourself over onto the other side. So closing your knees back together. Shifting your hips if you need to. Hand comes over so your fingers are joined together. And when you're ready, we go back into that rainbow-like stretch. Breathing in. Opening out, breathing out. Take your time. I like to do this one slower than this usually. And on this side, I can definitely extend a little bit further. I mean, I can almost get to the floor quite comfortably. On the other side, not a chance. So just be aware of that. I find it quite interesting that I can open all the way out whilst keeping my knees together and get my fingers on the floor on one side, but completely not on the other. I'm probably about a foot all. No. Such good, amazing body. So take a few more of these, so in your own time. You might like to do this one with your eyes closed. I like to do it with my eyes open. I'm really watching my hand. I'm really lifting. I'm getting a sense of drawing that rainbow. And we're going to make this one your last one. Breathing in as we go up. Breathing out as it comes down. Lengthening that arm in. And just returning it nice and gently, lifting up towards the ceiling as we go. Excellent. And then when you're ready, just gently get yourself back flat onto that mat again. Feet are high. That's good. Have a little roll around. Okay. We're just going to do one more little quick stretch. So I'm going to extend one leg, the leg that's closest to you. Just draw my other knee in, give it a little squeeze, a little rotate of the foot. And then just give it a bit of a hug and draw it across the body. So just a bit of a stretch. You feel a stretch up the outside of the leg. It's a bit of a weird one. I mean, it's a bit of a strange feeling to stretch out. So it's nice, but it's weird. To increase it, just look away from your knee. So try and relax in your glutes, because that's where the tension's going to be held. And just let that spiral in the spine happen. Keep your shoulder blades on the floor. Draw them away from your chin or from your ears. Take a breath in and take a breath to centre. Push that leg away, give it a little shake and then draw the other one in. So give that knee a squeeze, give it a little rotating. Then I take the opposite arm and I give it a nice hug and draw it across the body towards the floor, not aiming to get towards the floor, and then to increase the stretch a bit further, I'm just going to look away from it. Relax in the glutes, keep your shoulders on the floor. Relax in your belly. Let that natural curve in the spine occur, and you'll probably feel that stretch deepen the more you relax, as always. Relax. And then if you're ready, we're going to do some relaxation to finish off. So coming back to the centre. So this is your opportunity to make yourself comfortable however you prefer. You might like lying on your back, you might prefer to be on your front or your side. Legs bent, legs stretched, hands on your ribs, hands on the floor, wherever you feel comfortable. Just find your comfortable place. Grab your cushion if you haven't already, if you feel more comfortable. It's just an opportunity to gather before we finish. And for those of you that are new to the class, uh, when the lesson, when the class finishes, there's no need to come towards your device or say you've got bars on your face, please. 
the class will finish, you can stay exactly as you are for as long as you like. So, when you're comfortable and you're ready, I'd like you to close your eyes, at least soften your gaze. And we start by drawing our mind towards our breath, first of all. And as you're thinking about your breath, just notice where your shoulders are. Do they need to be pulled down slightly? Give your neck some space. And then when you're ready, take a couple of sighs, just like we did at the beginning of the class. Take a nice deep breath in, through the nose, and then a real proper sigh out, like a hug. I want you to take a few of those in your own time. And then when you have enough of that time, Start to focus your breathing. We're trying to breathe in through our nose as much as possible and out through our nose as much as possible. It increases the oxygen flow in your body and is generally better for us to breathe through our noses. So we're going to definitely breathe in through the nose. And keep breathing out through the mouth. If you like the feeling of the warm breath on the inside of your mouth as you exhale. Breathing in. Feel that warm breath as you breathe out. Keep on breathing. Maybe empty the lungs this time, but don't force it. Just let that exhale be a really long one. Good. So whilst we're taking these nice deep breaths, then find your happy place, somewhere between taking really extra deep breaths and your normal breathing, feeling very relaxed. We're going to take ourselves back to the same place we were last week, which was a favourite place. Maybe it's a beach. Maybe it's a field somewhere. Maybe you're under a tree and the grass is long. You can hear the birds. You can see the tree as you look up. In your mind's eye, you can see the sun glistening through the leaves. You can hear them rustle in the breeze. You're aware of the nice long grass that surrounds you and that feeling of sinking and hiding into the grass as you breathe in. And when you breathe out, you sink a little deeper into that soft grass. Let your mind wander down through your body just as if you were a bird in that tree looking down on yourself. Noticing your head, noticing any tension you might feel in your jaw. Just loosening that jaw a little bit. Noticing if you feel any tension in your head, in your neck. Gently letting your head rock with a very calm and easy mind. Notice the weight of the head, the balance that it takes to find that center. Let that feeling of shaking and nodding the head just melt away till you find your center. Still thinking about the breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, being aware of the long grass getting longer around you as you feel lovely and warm and safe heavy and relaxed. Notice the weight of your body in the space as if it's making a beautiful imprint. Be aware of the little gaps, maybe there's a gap in the small of your back, depending on how you're lying, maybe it's behind your knee, in the small of your ankle, in the nape of your neck. And then notice where there's real connection with the floor, with the ground. The sheer size of your shoulder blades and your hips, your thigh, your heel, your little finger, your elbow. All those areas of your body. Really notice them, think about every limb 
your belly button, your hips, your kneecaps. So take a deep breath in. And breathe out. Nice, heavy, warm breath. This time you're breathing in. I want to fill your lungs, fill every little pocket of space in your lungs. Breathe in as hard and as fast as you can. And then breathe out with all your might. Send all of the air out. Out, out, out. Get every last bit of stale air that never gets to escape out. So your next breath is fresh new air. And breathe out again. Let your breathing return to where you feel normal. Feel soft in your belly. Just let your fingers tingle. Give them a little wiggle. Give your toes a little wiggle. Send some life and energy back down there. Keep in your mind that feeling of being under a big, beautiful tree and a big, beautiful, green, grassy field with sun shining. You feel it in there. Keeping your eyes closed, just find your way to have a little stretch of your choice. Anything you like. Whatever feels nice. And then just take another moment to rest as you change position. I want you to keep your eyes closed and focus on your breathing. This lesson is going to end shortly. You don't need to do anything. You stay exactly where you are. Enjoy that feeling of relaxation. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for taking an hour all for yourself. It's so important and I hope you feel as better for it as I already do. Make sure you drink water this evening. Sleep the best sleep you've had all week. And we will end the session after the next three nice breaths. So stay where you are, take a long and short breath. So let's take a nice breath in. And out. And breathe out. Last one, breathing in and out.